Okay, so it looks like we're live and rolling. Uh, welcome to another episode of Talking Relationships with Kurt Smith, myself. Uh, we've got a few participants here and a few more are going to jump on board as we get going. So take the first couple minutes here to introduce our topic for this week, uh, describe it in a little bit of detail, a little bit of my experience with it, and then we'll go to uh, having a discussion with the whole panel. So uh, our topic this week is, is falling out of love. And it's a little follow-up from our discussion last week where you're loving somebody who's not loving you. And this is a little bit of the flip side of that where you actually fall out of love with the other person. So this is actually fairly common that this happens uh, at some point to, in some way or another. It happens to all of us. The relationship kind of lessens uh, to some degree. And then for some of us, we actually com do fall completely out of love with the other person. So it's not uncommon whatsoever. Uh, one of the things that we really need to understand about love is that it's not a constant thing. Love is something that really does uh, come and go and varies uh, depending on what the status of the relationship is. A lot of relationships um, go through stages that affect uh, how we feel about our partner and that's normal. Uh, so to expect that love should stay the same throughout a relationship is actually really problematic and that's one of the expectations that gets people into a lot of trouble for falling into the situation where they fall out of love because they think that it should always stay the same. So that's the first thing that we really have to kind of recognize is that uh, it's normal to have some give and take and ebb and flow to how we feel about our partner. Uh, so it's common for relationships to, to, to grow and to change and to some degree for us to grow apart if we're not intentional about growing together. Uh, and so a lot of relationships, because we aren't constantly nourishing them and growing them, we do at times feel like we're falling out of love with our partner. Uh, so it's important that we recognize that, uh, that that's normal and it's okay. Uh, what's the most important part is that we actually do something about it. And this is where a lot of couples um, miss opportunities to be able to keep the relationship together because they, they aren't working actively at engaging with their partner and identifying this when it starts to happen. So we'll get into details in a few minutes that kind of talk about that a little bit more. So the first thing is just kind of recognize that first of all this is, this is normal. And the second part to really kind of be aware of is, is actually addressing it. And this is where a lot of people really uh, fall apart is that um, they make assumptions when they're not feeling that connected to their partner, when they're feeling that they aren't loving them anymore or not in love with them. And that's a common phrase as I mentioned last week that I hear a lot in counseling, particularly from men, is that they are still, they still love their partner, but they're not in love with their partner. And they, a lot of guys really make a distinction there. And, and this is where some of the assumptions get us into trouble, is that we assume that we should still feel the same way about our partner as we did when we first met them. And that's just not going to be practical. So that awareness of of loving the other person but not being in love them is one of love with them is one of the things that often happens around feeling like we're falling out of love. Too many people feel that when they reach this stage where they're not loving their partner, that it means the relationship should be over, and that's just not the case. It's again, it's typical that this can happen, and it really comes about from us not addressing some things and actually nourishing the relationship. So it can get corrected if we'll actually address it. The problem that I run into with a lot of people that actually come to see me for counseling help is they've reached a point where they've just decided that this means the relationship should be over. Uh, a lot of people at that place have actually already checked out of the relationship. So a lot of people actually take the feeling of not feeling loved anymore or loving their partner and they step out of the relationship and get their needs met in other ways. This is where affairs often happen and originate out of. It's how we reach out and get over focused in work and in hobbies and other things that really get us distracted from really having a focus on our partner. So a common thing for people is that they really avoid this issue and that's one thing we'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes here about addressing that problem because that's a lot of times what is originating this from is that we're avoiding addressing this, our feelings, and sharing it with our partner. So as, as before we get into the discussion, just want to add this point, love is a feeling that that changes, it's not a constant, and that's okay and that's normal. It's just important what, that we do something about it when we're not feeling as connected with our partner and, and address trying to get reconnected and grow it back together. So falling out of love is normal. The real key is what we do with it. Uh, so we're going to kind of open up here to discussion talking about that in a little bit more detail um, and get some examples from some people if people have experienced this or know people have. So I'm going to unmute everybody here so that we can start to discuss things. Okay, so we've got, wow, how about that? Two men and two women. 
we can keep this balance, this will be awesome. One of the common complaints was going to be there's going to be too many women inputting. So uh, we've got Blair and we've got Christy and we've got Wendy. And uh, I'll ask Wendy a couple questions in a few minutes since she's got some professional experience with some of this. But let me just kind of throw this out first of all. Does anybody have anything to share from either personal experience or knowing somebody who's who's gotten into a situation where they've fallen out of love? And, and I'm talking about it really being different than, than we just the love lessons a little bit because that's really typical. I'm talking about somebody who actually really feels like they completely have lost the connection in the relationship. Anyone have anything that they could share about that? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Wendy. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Okay. Okay. I don't know of anybody who has fallen out of love and uh, you know stayed in the relationship. I can, I can tell you from my experience with my own parents, seeing them going through their ups and downs during their 50-year marriage and times when things got really tough with them, when I as a child thought they're done, they're getting a divorce and it's over. Um, and I, you know, and I don't know that they were out of love with each other. It sure seemed like it to me as a child. Right. But I think they came from a generation where they were committed to to the marriage, no matter what, and they did what it took to stay in the relationship. And now that I observe them, they're like two teenagers in love again. All of his kids are out of the house, and they hold hands, and they're always kissing each other, and you know, wow. it's good. And I know that they still have problems, but whatever they did, I think that. You know, it worked, and I don't know how they got the love back because there were certainly times when I felt like they were out of love, like I said earlier. Right. So I, th I think it can work if people are committed. I don't have experience personally in that area, um, and we can talk about some of my professional experience when you're ready, but just, okay. you know, observing my parents, they're great examples of people who pressed on. <laughs> okay, all right. I can... I can relate personally to having parents who aren't in love. Uh, unfortunately for mine, they never got to that second half that you're describing with your parents. So that that is a great testimony, and that really goes to what we really want to focus on, is that uh, it isn't just the fact that we fall out of love that's really uh, the end of the story. There's opportunities for that to change. And it, it is interesting to be able to identify that with your parents but not really know how they did that. But it's, it's great to hear that that is an example that you've seen that's possible. So... Chrissy, you have anything that you would want to share? Do you, have you experienced this, or to some degree, or or know somebody who has? Well, you know, like you like you had said earlier, um, the situational items. It's like going through hard financial trouble, you know, and 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 um, you know situations like that, and and I can relate to the you know, um, how do I say? not trying, it's the not trying part, you know, that, that, you know, makes it the hardest because you don't try and then all of a sudden the other, par your partner is not trying and that just makes it all the more, more difficult. Right. And it's easy, sometimes we find it easier to just not say anything at all than to deal with it because we know, we know it's there, you just, you just try and step around it some way or another, but it all, you always end up coming back to it at the end. You know, it's not going to go away. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. Now, you hit on a really couple, couple good points there. You mentioned uh, trying that, that one person doesn't try, and then that kind of snowballs, and the other person doesn't try. Why do you think that is? Why do you think we fall into that kind of situation where we just kind of give up and we aren't making the effort? Christy, I was asking. I mean, per, yeah. per, a person, I'm trying to think. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. That's all right. Take your time. <laughs> For, um, sometimes, you know, they it just gets pushed to the side, and you know, I I guess it would just depend on what the topic at hand is. Okay. You know, it would would make it easier, more difficult to to deal with, and and you know, emotionally wise, you know, sometimes it's so hard. We've been taught you know, from before to repress it and push it out of the way and instead of just dealing with it. So it's kind of a learned behavior from what we have seen growing up as well. Good point. 
Okay, so that's what was was modeled for you growing up is that you saw just to uh, uh, avoid it instead of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which makes it difficult now with my partner because he's so he doesn't express himself as well as I can. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he would agree with that or that. <laughs> That's your your opinion that you're the better communicator. Uh, well, no, I, I don't can doubt express it. my my feelings way more better than than okay. he usually will, you know, okay. and 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 give a little I'm a little more forceful at times than probably he would like. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I don't want to over stereotype, particularly about men being a man myself. But but that's not uncommon that men are going to struggle more with being able to express, particularly feelings, than than women are. So um, so that there, there can be a little bit of a difference there just between the sexes regarding that. I think sometimes that if I may add that yeah, we, please. Think, we, we think that it might go away. You know, like there's some issue that's causing a problem, and we just think if we I don't know why we think this, but I mean if you live long <laughs> enough, you will. You will learn that that doesn't happen that way. But uh, we we think that if we ignore something, it's just going to go away, and and it doesn't go away. Right. And um, I didn't model this between my parents, but later when I was uh, in a marriage, uh, before my wife passed away, I um, I my my wife and I actually went to the pastor of our church for some advice, and that was one of the things he said. He said, "Don't don't leave anything un." talked about, you know, no matter, always share what you're feeling, what you're thinking, don't think it's just going to kind of go off into oblivion, because it won't, it's it's going to be lodged somewhere inside of you. you know? Yeah, yeah, it stays there, and that's a little bit what Chrissy was kind of talking about, is that you avoid it, but it's still it's still there, and, that's right. and it does really, it really does accumulate, good, right. good point. Wendy, I'm curious just from your experience, and I don't know that everybody knows what Wendy does, that she's a divorce attorney, so she kind of deals with a lot of the stuff that, that I can get into uh, in helping people that are in really some bad spots. And so I'm just, I'm just curious, Wendy, what you hear for reasons or excuses that, that clients, when they come in and are explaining their reason why the marriage is over and they want your help with that, what, what you hear that kind of relates to this topic of falling out of love. Uh, you know, a lot of times I hear people talking about money. You know, they're not, they don't have a meeting of the minds in terms of money. Mm, okay. Or somebody is hiding, you know, spending habits from the other partner. And this causes a wedge in the relationship, which causes them to grow apart. I think a huge thing I hear about is money. Um, another thing is about one or both of the partners not being present with the relationship. Maybe somebody working a ton, okay. not giving you know the family the attention that the family deserves. You know, and the other partner feels slighted, and, and they get sick of getting the short end of the stick. And again, this causes a wedge in the relationship. And you know, and if people don't make the effort to talk about it and address it, then the wedge just grows until it's a huge Grand Canyon, and then it's right. over. Right. You know, so I hear about money, um, just not being present, lack of communication. Um, what else would there be? You know, a lot of times I hear about family interference. Um, oh, you know, wow. I don't okay. like I don't like my mother-in-law or my stepchildren or jerks. You know, <laughs> and so this you know this this causes problems. And and if the people can't get into some sort of family counseling or or you know work it out with the family, then sometimes there's no way to resolve it. Like, how do you pick your kid over your partner or vice versa? Who do you pick? I don't know. But um, by far the biggest issue I think I hear about is money. Um, it's just people not being on the same page, not talking about it. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know that's a huge one. Interesting enough, a lot of people that come in to see me for help. That's an area that I haven't some expertise to be able to help people with. But they typically don't come in for that that purpose. They're, it's identified as communication, or the the intimacy's not there, or again they've stepped out of the relationship in some form or another, whether it's an affair or porn or some kind of way that they're avoiding and escaping. Uh, money's almost always underlies everything. But what's kind of interesting is that, that you hear it on your end when they're actually really finally checking out and when I hear it where they're right on the edge of ready to check out a lot of times that's not what they identify as, as the problem so that's yeah. that's really interesting here that that's your experience yeah one thing that seems to be kind of coming up with all of this is the theme of uh, you used the, the phrase wedge and and both Blair and Chrissy were talking about it but just this avoidance pattern and we were even kind of hitting on that last week when we were talking about 
uh, falling, not having the person love us back, uh, that there's just a, avoidance going on. So let me ask just about that and kind of go back to something I said at the beginning. I'm curious what you guys think about the idea that love isn't a constant, that it ebbs and flows, uh, that there can be times where we either love our partner less or maybe even don't love them at all uh, for a period of time, but that doesn't have to be permanent. Do you guys agree with that or, or do you disagree and, and have a different kind of perception or experience as far as love is concerned? I'll just kind of throw that out for anybody who wants to jump on. Well, I, uh, if I may start first, you know, I think it's very important to distinguish between love and like. Um, Ooh, okay. The, yeah, because uh, I believe that that sometimes you can love someone, but you might be out of like. I mean, the real doesn't, doesn't sound like a nice little phrase. I'm out of like, you know. But in reality, I think the ebb in the way uh, and the ebb in the flow may actually be times of enjoying their company and liking them, and times of not enjoying their company and liking them. But the love may stay constant, you know, and I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I think we need to distinguish between the two. Okay. That, that's an interesting, you know, I hear like, I get so linking that to Facebook, but I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we can she be liking. Like uh, Facebook. A I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone else have have thoughts about that, Chrissy? What What do you think about the idea that that there's some flow to to love? I think I think a lot of us at the beginning, you know, um, well, this I guess not all of us, but you know, to some point, always wanted the fairy tale, you know, and thought it was going to last forever. And then you get into it, and you and you experience all these different kinds of things that happen, and you know, and it's true. It's not that I don't love my. It's not that I don't love my husband. It's just I think we have all these ups and downs and tests and stuff that goes through, that we go through. You know that that we kind of. I guess it's going to be our partner and I that are our partners and and themselves to determine whether it's going to go on or not. And so I totally agree that it's not going to always be the same. You know. Because there's so much that's always going on throughout throughout the journey. Right, right. One of the things that that I run into with a, a lot of couples is that they have this perception that there's basically two choices that they can choose from. They can either choose from the, where the relationship is at now, which they're typically not satisfied with, or this idea that it could go back to something that it was kind of at the very beginning, and that's often romanticized and kind of a um, uh, exaggerated exactly. about how they originally felt, and obviously at the beginning of relationships, we we do really care a lot more about the re the person than than typically. There's typically a high at the beginning that just can't last forever, but oftentimes people are just kind of picking between those two options, and they aren't allowing for what I really try to to encourage people to think about is that there can be a third option that if both people will make an effort to change, uh, the relationship could be something new and different going forward. But people are often trying just contrasting between. With the way the relationship is is now, and they're often again not happy with that, and this vision that it could go back to something in the past, which typically it, it can't. Um, Wendy, what thoughts do you have related to this whole thing of love? I mean, you, you kind of hit on it a little bit related to your parents and contrasting there, but do you, do you think that there is a... I definitely think that there's an ebb and flow um, with people who are in love, you know, and at certain times you may feel more in love with your partner and at certain times you may feel less. And I think it's related to what Chrissy is talking about. You know, it just kind of depends not only what is happening with the relationship itself, you know, money stressors or children or work, but it also ha uh, has to do with what's happening internally with the individual. You know, some hmm. days I wake up and I feel depressed. I don't know why. Maybe it's hormones. Who knows? You know, but on those days, I may be a jerk to my husband, and I may feel out of love with him, and it may go on for a week or two. Poor guy. You know, but, yeah, poor guy. You know, it happens. And so it's not just the relationship, but it's also where I am in my life. You know, maybe I got a horrible result in a case, and it's got right. me down, and I'm focused on that more and less on the relationship. So I think there's so many external factors that do affect the relationships themselves and do cause the ebb and flow. And it's great when both partners are in sync and feel exactly the same. Um, you know, but I think more often than not, than not, for me in my relationship with my husband, it seems as though there's always one of us who's in a more giving place than the other, which... Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. That's just the way it is. I'm not. It's not bad or it's not good. That's just the way it is. I feel. Right, but 
Go ahead, Blair. Well, Kirk, I just think that I mean this this is a very important topic that you're talking about because if people would go into the marriage knowing that it's going to ebb and flow, then they won't be so shocked and so surprised and then think it's abnormal and they're weird, you know? Right. And right. they might be able to deal with it better. Very so, good point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, expectations are just really, really huge, and unfortunately, we, our expectations get shaped by the families we grew up with, and a lot of us, as, as Wendy kind of pointed out with her parents, didn't have the best example of what a loving relationship is going to look like, and then we get influenced by our, our culture, and then what gets put through the media, and Hollywood puts out there, and we just have this real kind of warped sense of, of really what a relationship should, should look like. Right. And to go back to one thing you said, Wendy, there is that, uh, I forget the exact phrase you used, but you almost just said to some effect that there can be kind of one person can be at a little bit better relation point with the relationship than maybe the other person is. And when one person's at, uh, at, a, at a high and the other person's at a low, there's that kind of balancing effect that can kind of happen with it, a, a yin and a yang that actually can balance it out and keep it going. I don't think it's realistic that we're all going to be at the same point at, at any point in time, and that's okay. So what you just described with with your husband and that change, I think that can that can be healthy. I, I think it's good, and and usually, you know, when he's up and I'm not so up, I agree. It, it provides a good balance, you know, because I need him to be there for me uh, and be the strong guy right. for me, which he needs. I think you tell me, Kurt, as a man, he needs to feel like he's there and he's protecting me, and and that is good for the relationship overall. Yes. Um, you know, and then there's times when he needs me to be the, the up one and the strong one. And, and so it is a yin, a yin, uh, yin and yang thing, good balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, it is. Um, okay, so let me throw out uh, one, another question here. I'm going to open up, uh, add somebody else here. Um, so there was a comment in, uh, in the event that uh, somebody's not coming but asked about, and I thought it was a really interesting question. This adds in the whole element of kids, and we haven't really hit on that, although Wendy was talking about other stressors, and obviously kids' work uh, can, can fall fit in that category. But here was the question. Is it good to stay in, a, in an unloving, unfulfilling relationship or marriage because two people have children together? So before I kind of give my opinion about that and, and share maybe some experiences I've had with, with couples, I'm just curious what everybody thinks as far as what the effect is as far as kids when you're, you're feeling this way and how you define it. Because a lot of people, as we know, will, will stay in a relationship even though it's uh, not satisfying and they're not happy with it, not feeling that their needs are being met just because of the kids. And I think to some degree that probably describes my parents. Um, although I think there was definitely an economic factor that probably was even more so than that. But for a lot of people, they do stay in the relationship because of the kids. And and then other people just choose their feelings and probably don't prioritize the children enough in deciding to, to what they're going to do with the relationship. So I'm just curious. The topic of falling out of love, we're not satisfied in the relationship, but there's children. How should that factor in? Anybody have any thoughts? I, I think it's a balancing act. Um, you know, I believe at my core that we're all here on this earth to be happy and that we need to do what makes us happy. And, and I believe that if children are in a family where the parents are very unhappy, that it's not good for the children. Um, but I also don't believe that parents should be that quick or, or partners should be that quick to jump out of a relationship if they're experiencing you know, times of unhappiness, because as we've just been discussing, you know, there are times when the relationship goes through its downs, right. and that could last a day, or it could last a year, so the person who's in the relationship, I think, you know, needs to evaluate how long is too long to be in an unhappy relationship, and how long is too long such that it's going to affect me badly, or, you know, in a, a huge way, and it's going to affect the children in a huge way. So I, I just think that a couple of factors need to be balanced, but ultimately I believe that a person needs to do what they think is going to make them happy. Okay, okay. Um, I'll comment a little bit on the idea of balance, and I totally agree with that. That's uh, a really a key one as far as decision-making, but let me just throw it out to Chrissy. Do you have any yeah. thoughts on that when there's... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well... That was pretty much how, you know, how it was for my mom and dad, as, you know, and I, you know, God rest his soul, and I love my mom so much, but 20 years in an unhappy place is, is just not realistic for me, you know, 
uh, we grew up with parents to a certain point and then circumstances, you know, m my dad went one way and we had to go another, but, you know, that just to seeing how precious it is now, you know, I, I would agree, you know, with Wendy and, and, you know, just making the right choice, but not, not taking it to, to an extreme point because you can never get all that time back. Yeah. Okay. Blair, any thoughts? Well, I mean, it's, I don't think it's something that you can say across the board. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, I think that there are some situations where it probably is better to stay for the sake of the children and some situations where it's not. And um, if there's ver verbal abuse, if there's physical abuse, um, things like that, you definitely, it, it's not worth staying together for the kids. If they're just kind of out of love and they have a blah relationship, and and all, then maybe it is worth it to stay for the kids. But then it depends on how old the kids are. If they're only three years old when they when they're at that point, do they want to stay together for seventeen years? You know, that's a long yeah. time. Yeah. If they're thirteen years old and you're just waiting until they're eighteen for five more years, you might be able to to do it and pull it off. You know, so I, I don't think it's a across the board kind of okay. decision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. So uh, I had Kenya come in, and I, if I pronounced her name right, but it looks like she's like she stepped back out. I was going to ask her what she thought. So um, let me just kind of go back to a little bit of one of the phrases that that Wendy used, and that was was balance. And I think that's kind of key at, at looking at this. What one of the problems that I typically find in working with couples is that we have a tendency to really minimize the effect our relationship has on our kids. And it's just interesting to hear several of the people talk uh, today. Wendy, you mentioned it, and Chrissy, you did as well. And I, and I certainly am a testimony to it of the impact our parents have and the type of relationship they had um, on the type of relationship we end up choosing. And for a lot of us, the problems that we have in picking a partner and having a healthy relationship goes back to what was modeled on us um, or modeled for us. And what I find a lot of times is that couples really don't want to acknowledge, and oftentimes they, they aren't fully aware, they don't really want to acknowledge the negative effect the relationship has on their kids. And that's that's a hard one to to for all of us to be able to own, that we're making some choices that um, are hurting or damaging our, our children. Most of us wouldn't consciously or intentionally do that, but the choices that we make oftentimes do negatively affect them. And so I often find in situations where couples are stepping out of the relationship or choosing whether to, or just trying to decide whether to do that, is they typically really underestimate the effect that the relationship has already had on the kids. Now I think that would be easy to go, and this is where people often do, is that it's negative and it's and it's hurting them, so it's just better if, if we just either divorce or we live apart and they justify it that way. The, the problem here is there there really isn't a good answer to it. There's there's a negative effect on the kids staying together if the relationship is, is unloving and it's unhealthy and certainly can go to extremes like like Blair hit, hit on as far as uh, domestic violence and uh, maybe a verbal abuse. But a lot of relationships aren't to that extreme but are still detrimental to the kids because it's not a loving environment that the kids are in. They aren't having a, a healthy relationship modeled for them so they can learn how to do that themselves. And that's that's a detriment. The flip side of that is you know splitting the relationship apart and then kids have to bounce between houses and have two different families. And, and there's a lot of negative effects, as Wendy could probably comment on, uh, about divorce and the effect on kids. So I, I think the thing about this answering this question is the idea of balance and just kind of recognizing there isn't an easy answer to it, but I would really emphasize that it's easy for us to fall into a place where we want to minimize the effect on the kids. And we oftentimes rationalize our decisions and don't acknowledge that our decisions are very often shaped by what we want and our desires. And a lot of times that influences where we go with it more so than looking at the whole big picture. So it's a it's a tough question. Uh, it's certainly one where people a lot of times uh, will flip to one side or the other on it about d deciding whether to stay in the relationship because of the kids. And I think you've just got to be willing to look at the, the whole picture. So uh, before we work at wrapping it up, is there anything anybody wanted else wanted to say about just the, the topic of falling out of love or anything that's been brought up? Is there any uh, questions or any final thoughts anyone wants to share? You're looking up, Wendy, like you're trying to think of something. I'm, try, I'm trying to think say. of something. I am trying to think of something brilliant. <laughs> Some, but it doesn't, no, it doesn't have to be. Well, you probably, uh, in your counseling, you have probably even said this to couples before, but 
when people have fallen out of love, you, you, you got to remember that there was a reason that they fell in love with in, in each other in the first place. Right. And a lot, a lot of times, if they'll go back and, and and look at those things and 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 see why did they fall in love with each other in the first place, that might re, you know, bring some things back to life and and help them to be able to revive some stuff at the present. You know? Good point. I completely agree. Absolutely. And I, and if I can chime in there, I think it really is important um, for parents. Uh, or people to remember this when they split up and if they do share children uh, because it's not healthy I see a lot of people coming back to me after they've separated and they you know they talk about what a jerk my ex is and how he's yeah. a horrible person and he does this and he does that and you know I always want to tell them well listen you chose this person That's right. <laughs> you chose to have children with them and they're gonna be with you yeah. You know, yeah. because yeah. of the children. Yeah. So if, if people can find it anywhere within them to, to think about any redeeming quality and help and, think, and keep that in mind as they're raising the children or co-parenting post-separation, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. Chrissy, any final thought? Any? So I think they, they pretty much covered it. You know, that as uh, being a um, a single mom for uh, you know for about five years you know the mm. hold back between my my ex and myself we were never married it's just you know trying to find that trying to find a nice way to you know to be there <laughs> even when you didn't really want to look at the person you know it's it, I think it's really important and even more so for the kids because you know even my daughter now, being 20 years old, she says she has to say, "Mom, that wasn't very nice." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so here's the the final thought I I would put to this, and this goes back to something Blair said just a minute ago, and 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 that's the whole focus on on why, and I think that's an important thing to look at as to why we have fallen out of love. But I'd even suggest that there maybe is a more important question to look at before the why, and that's what are we going to do about it? And oftentimes, uh, people, as I said earlier, will escape. Uh, typically, falling out of love doesn't happen overnight. It's something that's a slow, gradual thing that just happens over time. Uh, we don't really ever really identify it, and be, as we talked about earlier, we avoid, and it becomes a wedge between us. And so, the first bigger question I think than why is what, and that what is what are we going to do about it? And if we will make the choice to do something about it, to at least try, one of the aspects that can be of trying to understand why, um, as well as what we can do to possibly either restore the relationship so that there is a love that can return, because it can, as Wendy talked about with her parents, or the relationship can evolve and become something new. And so I would say even more so important than why is the what, and what are we going to do about it. Is typically what I experience is that people have already decided what they're going to do and are looking for a way to justify it, and the clients that Wendy deals with have already decided that they're done and are checking out of it. And so I would challenge people to really be thinking about the what. And the other aspect of that is recognizing when you're starting to drift apart and do something about it, as opposed to waiting until it's to the point where there feels like there's no love at all, and then you're just ready to pull the plug. And that's typically where people get to, like uh, I think Blair had hit a little bit earlier, that we avoid the issues and get to the point where we just are are done and there's nothing left that we want to give and it's it's too late. So the challenge I put out for everybody is to address it earlier on and and work at doing something about it as opposed to justifying the decisions that have already been made. Okay, so let's just we'll wrap up there. Um, the the next hangout we're going to have is going to continue the theme of, of love and we're going to look at. Uh, can we get somebody to actually love us? Is there a way to make people love us? And that's been a question that's come up in some of the comments, so we're going to explore that next time. Uh, the Hangout won't be next week. It'll actually be in two weeks, and we'll go back to Tuesday. Uh, we did Wednesday this week because of the holiday on Monday, so in two weeks on Tuesday, uh, the 17th of September, we'll have our next Hangout uh, continuing this discussion of love. And so I look forward to seeing everybody there, and thank you, Blair and, and Chrissy and Wendy and... Uh, Kenya and, and uh, Regina checked in, but they didn't actually get live, so hopefully we'll see them next time. So Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. appreciate all the input and participation. Okay. In two weeks. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.